Hi everybody, this is uh, Scott George, and uh, thank you for taking a few minutes uh, out of your schedule. I've got a great friend of mine, uh, Mike Dippy from uh, iDignity. So Mike, it's good to have you. Nice to be here, thank you. You got one of the one of the best nonprofits uh, <laughs> in the community, and uh, uh, you're on the, the A list, so. Oh, thanks. Uh, thanks uh, so much for taking time just to be with us, and we, we're gonna talk about uh, iDignity and how you started it, and, and, and uh, hear a couple of success stories of people, their lives have been changed. You know, this book is um, Doing Good Great. Right. It's one thing just to do good, but really there's a whole nother level that, that, that it takes to get where you are doing good great. Mm -hmm. And uh, you and your uh, nonprofit, um, you guys are doing good great. And we're Thank really, you. really grateful as a community to have you. Tell us, um, tell us how you started I Dignity and what the name means. Just kind of give us a little background. Yeah, I think it was founded by five downtown Orlando churches. Um, they were all kind of the bellwethers of need in our community, okay. um, and, and rightfully so. Um, and one of the issues that we discovered from people coming to worship service that were obviously homeless and needing of assistance, um, there's many barriers. It could be food or, or housing mm -hmm. or health care. Um, but a number were saying we, we need assistance getting identification. I have someone that will hire me. I have this disability check that I can't cash. And like any good church, you try to find someone that is doing that service so you yes. can refer this individual to, so we're not recreating the wheel every yes. time. Um, and we couldn't find anyone that would assist with that process, and we found it was quite a bear to try to assist someone in getting their identification documents. And it's hard enough to get your own ID renewed. It's, yes. You can imagine for some person that you just met off the street to try right. to get theirs. Um, so the five downtown churches, we got together for about six months and figured out how we're going to solve this in our community. Um, we worked with the government agencies, we worked with social service agencies, we talked to the homeless individuals themselves and worked out a viable plan um, six months later, um, really with a group of about 20 leaders in the community from these churches that said, we're going to get this done. Um, mm, amazing. We, we weren't sure it was going to fly. Um, it was difficult to get the government agencies involved because we're dealing with federal, state, county, and city governments. Um, but thankfully, they, they stepped up to the plate and have been great partners ever since. Um, so we started in May of 2008, held our first event where we bring all the government agencies yes. together with attorneys and notaries and about 100 volunteers and processed 200-something clients that first event and been going ever since. Um, and so the name I Dignity, um, uh, explain that a little bit. Uh, it was just a fluke, just looking for something that went with ID, yeah. symbolizing identification. Um, I think I was looking through Webster Dictionary, uh, mm -hmm. and, and dignity popped up and threw an I in front of it. Uh, yeah. So it's represented. Which is which is huge. I mean, the word dignity. I mean, uh, uh, drill down just a little bit on that. I mean, what does it what does it mean uh, to treat people, whether they're homeless or uh, people working poor, the struggling? What what does it mean to treat people with dignity? Yeah. To me, um, and I started this quest just really, really being. Uh, forthright and welcoming the homeless to my church, make sure they felt comfortable coming in to worship and talking to them, and quickly realize um, really their greatest need is to just be recognized as being human. Yeah. Um, just to have someone that will talk to them and not try to look the other way. And that's the kind of dignity is just listening, just recognizing them as children of God. Um, and we see that all the time, even though what I Dignity does is very, very pragmatic in its core of restoring identification mm -hmm. documents. It's, it's really just treating them as humans, um, treating them with respect and kindness and love that they don't yeah. typically get. And a lot of the dignity comes from that. Um, but also it's just, it's very undignified not to be able to prove who you are to anybody. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's not that people are mean, they just legally can't believe who you are because you don't have the documents to prove it. So yes. to get that health care, to even access your own bank account or cash that check or yeah. to get in school or to get that job, you're just getting turned away. And it's not the fault of mean people out in the world, it's just, these are the requirements to participate in our society is to be able to legally prove who you are. Yes. And so it's, it's that dignity of being able to prove that um, yes. through these legal identification documents that really kind of reestablishes their place in our society. Yeah, it really liberates them, doesn't it? I mean, it does. when they get these uh, the identification cards, it gives them uh, liberty where we take these things for granted. Yep. But without them, man, we're all lost. We are. It's a, it's a very empowering piece um, that enables them to go and then help themselves. We call it the golden ticket, and that's what's recognized as the street's golden ticket, yes. these little ID cards, because you get the card and all of a sudden all these magical doors of opportunity open up Amazing. that were just shut in your face. Now, you, now um, tell me what drives 
Michael Dippy to do something like this because uh, I got an idea, I got a feeling that you were on a different track, a different maybe that mindset, was. and then all of a sudden something happened, and you made that shift from doing good to doing good great. Tell me about that shift and, what, and how that happened. I mean, I, I think I've always had a lot of empathy for the poor, um, just born into it and seeing the suffering on our streets um, yeah. has always been an eye-opener to me. Um, and trying to figure out how can I play a role in addressing that. Yeah. Um, for me, one of the poignant parts in, in my journey was having a, a visiting pastor come to my church, and he challenged everyone in the congregation to find one thing that really bothers you, one thing that just angers you, some That's type good. of social injustice, some type of unmet need, with the idea that that anger is going to drive you, yes. um, it's going to motivate you. And for me, it was really the, the, the plight of the poor on our streets in downtown Orlando, and so it was my job to find out what's causing that plight. Yeah. And one of the really kind of fundamental systemic issues is identification. You know, you can't say to someone, hey, go get a job, and they tell you, I don't have an ID, and you go, well, that's a pretty good excuse. <laughs> how do we fix that? Because yeah. I know you can't do that yourself. So how can I fix that and then empower you to now get that job? Um, and so that was a motivation for me was to, to hear that pastor really rung in my heart. Love that it. I need to drive and I need to step up and figure out how I can address the, the plight of the poor. And it's just a very pragmatic way to do it. You know, I identify with that because when I started the Community Food and Outreach Center 14 years ago, it, it, it was out of anger. I was angry at how the church was treating poor people. Right. And that's exactly so. When you said that, I really never thought of that. But I'm, I'm so glad that you, um, I'm so glad you responded. I know it's not easy moving from good to doing good great. There's got to be obstacles. There's got to be some hardships. Not everyone's doing it because it's it's difficult. But give me a story. Give me a face. Tell me tell me a success story of someone that you've been able to come alongside. And, and when you're tired, when you feel like quitting, when you feel like giving up, you're reminded of that person and their story motivates you to keep helping people. You know, it's odd because the, the stories that ring most true, the motivation for me are, are not even really the clients that I'm serving. And that sounds bizarre because that's why I started it was to try to help a guy get an ID and understand it wasn't just me. It was 20 people. Um, I was just kind of yeah. helping to lead the group. Um, but what truly inspires me is all the community coming behind this effort, the the support of the volunteers. There's 100 volunteers at every one of these monthly events. People are taking vacation days to come volunteer. It's, it's the outpouring of financial support, um, yeah. individuals giving their hard-earned money, investing in identity to cause some type of social return on that investment, and they're not even seeing the people that they're impacting. That's that's the real motivating part to Good. me, is to see how many people are coming along behind us, yeah. and that's what makes it great. It's not any one individual. It's really, it's, it's, it's the ability to empower this community to wrap their hands around what is a solvable solution yes. and, and really get behind it. Um, I, I remember at one time we were started by, as I mentioned, five churches, and it was a little bit disconcerting because we're all faith-based, we're all faith-motivated, and, and what we're doing is really just providing government-issued identification. There's no real prophetizing. There's no real, right. hey, come to Jesus, you know, here's your ID. <laughs> and I, I was talking to a funder about that and how it's always kind of bothered me. You know, we, I think that clients understand that we are coming from a church background and that's why we're driven to the service yes. and, and assisting them, but we're not really guiding them directly to God. And, and she looked at me and she told me, you're wrong, Michael. And that kind of sets you back anytime sure. a funder tells you you're wrong. Yeah. And she says, you're, you're serving every one of those volunteers, those people that are sitting in the pews of the church every Sunday sure. looking for an opportunity to serve God. And you're providing that opportunity in such a pragmatic way. It's and true. I see that from the volunteers. I see it from the donors as well. They're just so grateful for a chance to get engaged, to be yes. part of this good. And, and I think that's what makes it great. And it's been an amazing uh, ripple effect uh, uh, of your vision and uh, your ministry. And uh, we want to we want to thank you. I wanted to highlight you in the book, Doing Good Great, because uh, in my opinion, and I think in the opinion of a lot of people in Central Florida, <laughs> Man, you made that shift, and uh, our prayer is that through this book and the video that we will continue to inspire maybe even the next generation, right, to follow in our legacy. And uh, I'm reminded of, of the uh, quote, you know, Martin Luther King says, life's most persistent question is what are you doing for others? Yeah, and, and I think everyone can be involved at some level. It's yeah. not just the people that are, are 
directly helping the clients. Um, it's also the people that are investing that. And really, even my position has greatly changed in the past six years to where I barely even see a client anymore. Wow. And my role has now changed to kind of being the leader and being the mentor, empowering other people to have this opportunity to serve. Um, there's so many ways to be involved and in doing good, and it's not just that direct client. It's, it's yes. the overall service. It takes us all in different parts. It takes a village. It does. And it's an honor to be a partner with you and, and, and work together. And uh, this whole video was really inspired just to, to help people get behind your vision, your ministry, iDignity. So there's going to be uh, information on the bottom of the screen right. to people get behind and support you. So on behalf of our community... Uh, thank you for doing good, great, and we appreciate all you do for Central Florida. Thank you.